The uh, next man I'm about to introduce to the stage, you know it's an important job when I don't understand it. The next man I'm about to introduce to the stage is the chair of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Hands up if you've ever been a chair. <laughs> we have one over here, we have one over here, we have... <laughs> don't show off before you get on stage, come on. Um, can someone explain to me what a chair is? Something you sit on. Well, prepare to sit on this next speaker. <laughs> Melbourne International Comedy Festival certainly has come a long way in the past 33 years. It's fair to say that comedy has come a long way, and never more so than the past year, where comedy has risen to unimaginable heights of consciousness and affection, while at the same time challenging audiences to think about their lives and the lives of others. And I need to look no further than Hannah Gatsby to make this point, who I know we're going to hear from in a moment. I have a little story about Hannah. It's actually at my expense, and Hannah knows nothing about it. But in <laughs> last year, July 29, it was a Sunday. It was early morning. I just arrived in New York, and I was at reception. <laughs> <laughs> It was actually the reception of my hotel. There was a wee queue, so I picked up a complimentary copy of the New York Times, Sunday edition, as most of you know, it's very thick. And I started browsing through it, and I got to the entertainment section, and this was this huge picture of Hannah, and an even larger picture, larger, sorry, story. I, I browsed through it, I turned the page, and there's more on Hannah. I turned the page again, and there's more on Hannah, and I was really quite excited. By that time, the queue had disappeared and I was facing the receptionist. And I was like a little boy, I sort of held up the newspaper and pointed and went, this is one of our artists. <laughs> she looked at the paper, she looked at me, she smiled and said, you don't have to tell me anything about Hannah Gatsby. <laughs> That's a true story, it really happened. I think it's wonderful they actually organised it for my arrival, but <laughs> it, it really did happen. I've taken the left turn so you know there's no jokes. <laughs> Although with me it's, it's hard to say whether I'll do jokes or not anyway. It's not what I do anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, cracker of a festival. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I, um, I would like to say a few words. I would like to, I, I mean, I feel like I am a literal sponsor child of this festival. Um, I came up through the ranks, uh, Royal Comedy, uh, I did Comedy Zone, Roadshow, uh, Geez Louise, and I think that these, these programs really help nurture not only my voice but also my confidence to use my voice on stage. And I doubt without the infrastructure provided by those programs that I would have persevered through the rough and tumble of the world of stand-up comedy. Uh, I don't have, and nor have I ever had, the constitution or the disposition for the rough and tumble uh, of, of pub and club comedy, you know, to be competitive, to hustle and to fight my way through the ranks of that world. I doubt that I would have. Um, and even if I had of, I think it's certain that the more competitive and masculine world of stand-up in pubs and clubs would have shaped a much different voice than I'm able to use today. I have rarely had the loudest voice in any room and I believe firmly that this festival has played a very large part in giving me the time, space and safety to nurture my own voice and find a platform and the strength and confidence to use it. I, when I first began, it was about uh, nearing 15 years ago now, it was safe to say that diversity wasn't a key, uh, a key quality of the stand-up comedy population. And certainly I think if anyone in that time would, would be asked to sort of imagine the quintessential stand-up comic, I think it would have just been a white guy. You know, uh, and that's, uh, that is changing. And, uh, but I don't want to, uh, I was guilty of that myself at the time. 
If I would have closed my eyes and imagined a quintessential stand-up comedy when I first started comedy, I would have just taken my idea of a doctor and taken off his white coat and put him in jeans and a t-shirt. And I was a queer comic with a lady doctor from Mumbai. And that is how deep cultural conditioning and bias runs. And I think this festival is helping to slowly unpick those sorts of things. I think uh, coming out of this festival, and particularly in Australia, you have some of the, I believe, best comics working here, uh, best female comics in the world co coming out of Australia. Whether or not the world knows that or not is a different thing altogether. But I see Celia Bacola and Edmonds and Zoe Kuzma. <laughs> She'd like it if I'd say a name right, but <laughs> she'll be right. Um, I see them, you know, punching equally as hard as I am and equally as well and brilliantly and others. Uh, and I see this festival as part of that. And I can only hope that the diversity continues to grow more genders and in particular sponsoring and fostering and nurturing, uh, particularly in this racially fraught moment in history, uh, more diversity in race. Um, I think it's an exciting time. I think this comedy festival is a central part of comedy culture in Australia. It is certainly the centre for most working comics calendar. And I think that's the reason why we have so many, and I say this, the future is strong, but also we have many mid to late career comics at the height of their powers. And they are incredible at this which is to say long form comedy. And I, I, I'd say that uh, those people who get to decide who's, who gets a special on these digital platforms, apparently I know these people, but networking has never been my skill set. So um, I'm not sure, but I would say they would do well to look to this festival and see who's working, not just the next best new thing, but people who've already been working and honing these skills. I believe there is a revolution in comedy about to happen, a real big global revolution. I believe that it's a revolution where the, the joke is not the only tool in a comedian's kit. It's a revolution where the joke is not the only reason for a comedian to speak. And I think this festival is a good part responsible for the situation in Australia, in comedy in Australia, where we already have an enormous amount of talent working well beyond the mould set by club and pub comedy. And I am proud to be a product. I did a lot of work myself, I won't give it all <laughs> over. I came with ideas and thoughts of my own. <laughs> But I'm proud to be a part of this festival and uh, to bring my new show back here. It does feel like uh, a family and a home here. And when I say family, with all the pros and cons that go, go with that. Um, but it's a, it's a wonderful festival and I'm proud to be part of it. And I would encourage anyone who wants to see me, I've sold out. And uh, <laughs> So please, take a punt. See someone you don't know and I would... I would really strongly encourage you to see somebody who does not look like you. Thank you very much. <laughs>